Hi, it's Steve. Today we'd like to show you how to change the lower shaft seal on the transmission of your top load washer. It's a really easy repair. Let me show you how we do it. Now to do this repair, we will need to lay the washer on its back. So the first thing we'll need to do is to disconnect the power. So pull the washer far enough forward that you can unplug it. We'll also need to disconnect the inlet hoses. So turn off both the hot and cold water, remove the hoses from the back of the washer. And we'll also need to pull the drain out of the standpipe and be sure to drain as much water out of that drain hose as you can. Once we've done that, we'll pull the washer far enough forward that we can safely lay it on its back. Now before we lay the washer on its back, since we are going to be removing the bottom of the brake and the opening in the base frame is fairly narrow, we need to make sure that our tub stays quite centered. Now to do that, you can either raise the lid and block that from the inside with either a piece of wood or plastic to hold it in place. Or also, you can take and lift the whole top and lid assembly and place a spacer block in behind the outer tub. So that's the method that we'll show you here today. To lift up the main top, we're going to need a thin putty knife. We'll go into this gap between the front panel and the main top. And about four inches in from either side, there is a spring clip that holds the main top down. Simply push in against the tension of that spring. Do the same on the opposite side. And then we'll raise that top up. You either have somebody hold that in place or lean it against the wall. Now with this particular model, a spacer block of about two and a half inches is just about right. So we're just gonna tuck that in behind the tub cover at the rear and just tape it to the tub cover. That will hold that tub in place. We can then lower that main top, line up the holes in the bottom of the main top with these two locating pins, and then snap it down into place. And now with some assistance, we're going to pull that washer forward and lay it completely on its back. Now that we have the washer secured on its back, our next step will be to remove the drive belt. Simply roll that off of the pulleys. And set that aside. Now next we need to get the main drive pulley off. So first we'll remove that dust cap. And underneath that you'll note that there is a clip. We'll snap over the end of the lower shaft using a flat blade screwdriver. I'm just gonna pry that clip off. Now next we'll need to take note of the sequence of the following parts that are gonna come off. First it'll be a thin washer the cam that fits into that pulley. Slide that off. Now, depending on your model, you may have this style of a thrust bearing on the bottom. Well, this is one piece. And then there may be one or two thrust washers below that. Now our next step is to remove the bottom cover of the brake. Now if you're able to borrow the tool that is specifically made for this style of washer, you can go ahead and install that on there and remove the screws that secure the brake cover. If you don't have that tool, we can simply do it by removing triangular shaped series of three screws and then we'll install some longer ones Remove the remaining short screws and then just carefully in sequence loosen the longer screws and that will allow that bottom of the brake to lift away without the spring damaging anything. These are 5 16 hex head screws. They're also a number 10 screw, 24 threads per inch. 
So a 1024 screw is what we're looking for. And if you can find something an inch and a half to two inches long, we'll just thread those into the same spot. Now with the longer screws in place, we'll just remove the remaining short ones. And then we'll just in sequence, loosen these screws a little at a time. Now if you note that that brake cover is binding on that opening in the base frame, you may need to open up the lid and either increase or decrease the size of the block that you have supporting that tub to either tilt it up or lower it down to allow it to come through there easily. Let's pop through on its own. And keeping in mind that spring tension is around 200 pounds pressure on it. That's why we need to make sure that we have at least three long screws in here. So once we've reached the end of that spring travel, lift the brake drum away. We'll next slide that brake rotor out of the way and the spring. Now to remove the seal from the bottom of that transmission, if you don't have the proper tool for that, the next easiest way to do that is to take a flat blade screwdriver and just pry up around the edge of that seal it has a metal casing to that seal that is coated in rubber. You just fold that back enough that you can grip it with a pair of needle nose pliers and then we'll pull it straight off of that shaft. But first you'll want to clean up any of that grease that's in the way there so that we can see what we're doing. Just continue to pry that edge of that seal away from the spline on that transmission. Now once we pull that away a little bit, We'll then take our needle nose pliers. <clears throat> we can pull that old seal completely off of that shaft and discard it. And next we'll want to clean up that area, particularly the inside edge of that lower housing of the transmission so that the new seal can fit in there nice and tight. Remove any oil or grease that is collected in that area. If need be, use a little solvent to clean it up. Now, once we've cleaned that out good, we're next going to take our new seal. We're going to slide it over the installation tool. Make sure there's no burrs on the edge of that tool. And firmly press that on until it bottoms out. And once you have the seal on that tool, you want to carefully slide that over that shaft. Now to help guide that tool onto the shaft, we've taken a piece of three quarter inch pipe nipple. Make sure we have enough length that you won't hit this shaft. We don't want to damage that. Then we're going to drive that seal into the bottom of the transmission. Now, once that edge of that seal is flush against the bottom of the housing, we're just going to grip those two tabs and pull the holder away from that seal. And now we can reassemble the brake. So next we'll slide the spring over the lower portion of that transmission, make sure it fits into the cup. 
We'll then take our brake rotor. First of all, make sure that the actual brake pad itself is clean and dry. There shouldn't be any lubricant on that at all. We'll line up the splines on the inner side of that with the splines on the outside of the transmission housing. And just look in back, make sure that spring stayed in the cup. We'll also clean the inside edge of the brake drum before we install that. And then we'll just line it up, install the longer screws. So now we're ready to put that brake drum on. We'll start by inserting one of the longer screws. And we'll want to try to keep that label facing towards the front of the washer. And again, we'll put these on in a triangular pattern. Now, once we've started all those by hand, try to keep the bolts centered in the hole. And then we'll start to tighten them down. And again, you may find that it's snug going through that opening, so you may need to manipulate that tub assembly to allow it to pop into place. Now, once we're up above the base frame, we should be able to start those shorter screws. Now, once we've got those shorter ones started and are part way in, you can go ahead and remove the long ones again. And replace them with the remaining short ones. And make sure we have all six of those screws tightened securely. Now we're ready to reassemble our lower pulley. So replacing those washers in the same sequence that you removed them. There may be one or two on the bottom. And if we look at the drive pulley, you'll see that there are a couple of ribs on the outside of that hub. And those will be our indicator points for making sure that we have the brake set properly. If we've reused the parts in the same order that we removed them, there should not be any issue. So next we'll place the cam into position. It splines to that shaft. Now when we place that cam into the hub of that pulley, that arrow should be pointing away from these three inner tabs. And this will be used to indicate whether we have the whole assembly back together properly and adjust it properly. Now next we'll take a flat blade screwdriver and you're just going to grab that little groove in that lower shaft, make sure that we pull that down far enough. Next we'll place that thrush washer on top of that and then we need to put that e-ring back in place. So make sure that washer is not sit down into that groove. And with a pair of adjustable pliers, we'll pop that E-ring into place. Now when rotating that pulley counterclockwise, that little indicator arrow should line up between those two outside marks when it releases that brake. It's a little difficult with it laying on its back, so you may need to do it a couple of times to make sure that that tub spins, but you should meet that resistance fully in this area here. So 
So as long as that little arrow is between those two when you're meeting that resistance, that's set properly. You can replace the dust cover. So we snap that into place. And now we're ready to reinstall the belt. So when installing the belt, we'll wrap it around the pump. And depending on your model, the pump may be located in the right rear or at the front. Wrap it around the motor. And then pull it over to the drive pulley and just rotate it into place. And now we're ready to stand the washer back up. Now that we have the washer back on its feet, we're next going to lift up that top again. Be sure the top is supported. We'll remove our spacer block. Lower the main top back down again, making sure that we line up those locator pins. We're now ready to push the washer back into place, reconnect our fill hoses, turn on the taps to make sure we have no leaks, reconnect the drain, then we can reconnect the power and your repair is complete.